Golden Valley's downtown area is one step closer to getting a major redesign. As Delane Cleveland reports, the project would add a 302 unit apartment complex, making it one of the largest apartment buildings in the city. We've been engaged on this site since 2021. Along Golden Valley Road and Wisconsin Avenue sits a Wells Fargo bank and a vacant building that was once home to a Park Nicollet Clinic. Golden Valley officials want to do more with that area. We've been looking at the downtown and even this site in particular for quite a while. A developer, Sentinel Management Company, has proposed demolishing the Park Nicollet building and constructing a new Wells Fargo on that site. Then they want to demolish the current bank and replace it with a 302-unit apartment complex. Ultimately, we were drawn to the site because of the city's vision for it and to have a part in transforming the city's downtown into a suburban, urban, vibrant, transit-oriented neighborhood. At a city council meeting Tuesday night. But what I'm worried about is how that's going to look directly across the street from me. People in the neighborhood came out for a public hearing to voice their thoughts. I'm for it. I don't care that there's an apartment building there. I'm sick of looking at the Wells Fargo building. Others, however, brought up a host of other concerns, from the unwanted shade a building would provide to increased traffic in the area to crime. I had $1,764 taken from me because they got my purse and they got into my bank and they had someone impersonate me, right? And we have eight cops for 22,700 people in Golden Valley and we want to add 300 units where two people per unit could live. Can we handle that? while the council acknowledged their concerns. And I want to encourage the, um, the developer to really take into account the feedback from the neighborhood. Ultimately, they decided that the apartment complex would be a good thing for the area. I think increasing the density there will increase the chance that we'll have more restaurants, more retail, um, you know, more, more grocery stores and things like that. In Golden Valley, Delane Cleveland, CCX News. The City Council voted unanimously to approve the land use and zoning changes. It now goes to the Metropolitan Council for review. Meanwhile, Golden Valley's three-term mayor, Shep Harris, plans to usher in a new era for the city. I am going to continue to be an active member of this community, but I've decided to not run for re-election this coming November. Golden Valley Mayor Shep Harris made that announcement at the end of Tuesday night's city council meeting. He says he was extremely torn by the decision, but says his family and professional work were significant factors in deciding not to run for re-election this fall. He also addressed those who may think the decision was in part caused by the city's police staffing challenges. For those who may think that this decision has been made in the past few months or due to recent challenges in Golden Valley, um, it is not. Uh, it is something that I've actually agonized with and agonized over for several years. Uh, my family has made significant sacrifices for me for the past 12 years. Mayor Harris said he wanted to make the announcement now so community members could start vetting potential candidates. He also spoke about a characteristic he would like to see in the city's next mayor, calling on the community to rally around someone who is a healer. On Wednesday, we learned the first candidate to declare a run for mayor. Councilmember Jillian Rosenquist says she's running for the role. Rosenquist has served on the council since 2018. Brooklyn Park is the first police department in the state to test out a new level of mental health response, one that city leaders say could be a model for the rest of the state. It's in our DNA to find different ways to better serve this community. It always has been. We, we don't, we don't uh, accept in Brooklyn Park being okay. We want to be the best and to do that, you've got to keep up with the times and look at the needs of your community. Brooklyn Park on Wednesday showcased its new alternative response team. It consists of a North Memorial Health paramedic and a social worker from Hennepin County. Police emphasize that this team will respond to calls that do not involve weapons or potentially violent situations, but rather calls that could include substance abuse, indecent exposure or suicide. The team is already making a difference. I had an officer just come up to me last week and say, you know, I was one of the biggest skeptics when they told us we were going to do this. I didn't think it was going to work. I didn't think you guys were going to be any, any help. And I I totally converted. I totally am so grateful you're here and I hope we can get more alternative response soon. The alternative response team will initially work a Monday through Friday, 10 to 5 shift, but the goal is to eventually expand those hours.
Pucks start dropping on Thursday at the Plymouth Ice Center for the USA Hockey High School National Championships. It's a prestigious tournament that will feature close to 50 teams from all around the U.S. Jason Malello reports. A process that started about 15 months ago. You have the capabilities of housing 48 teams and pulling off 94 games. Do you have volunteers? Do you have referees? What kind of facilities do you have? Is now in the home stretch. Getting to this point, uh, there's been a lot of people that have put in a lot of work and time, specifically Why is that a Youth Hockey Association. Plymouth Ice Center is the primary location for the USA Hockey High School National Championships. Pick is hosting the tournament for the second time in five years. We have three ice sheets here in Plymouth and the setup and the flow of it uh, work really well. We've expanded to four rinks. We're using parade in the three rinks at Plymouth. There's 94 games in total and four championships that will be decided on Monday. This is USA Hockey's premier tournament for high school aged players from around the U.S. We got teams from Alaska, teams from New York, teams from Massachusetts, Florida, Texas. This year the field has expanded to 48 teams in four divisions and there should be a lot of talent on the ice. There's going to be some really good players here. For instance, um, Ryan Johnson, who was a NHL first round draft pick, who's played for the Gophers for four years, number 24. He played in this tournament in 2018 was on the winning Santa Margarita team. If you're a fan that just wants to stop by to see some really good hockey, the price is right. Admission to all games throughout the tournament is free. Pretty much from eight o'clock in the morning till nine or nine or 9.30 at night, you can come here and watch great hockey, a game on each rink. In Plymouth, Jason Melillo, CCX News. Plymouth estimates the tournament will have an economic impact of about $1.3 million. The 2023 Wyzetta boys basketball team is shooting for a third state championship game appearance in as many years. The Trojans took the first step to reach that goal Tuesday afternoon. Greg Burke, who works at Wyzetta High School and a former Osseo assistant, now the head coach of White Bear Lake, leading the Bears to the state tournament for the first time since 2000. And they get off to a strong start against Wyzetta in the quarterfinals. Zach Nelson buries a corner three-pointer to put White Bear Lake up 11-7. Nelson made four threes in the game. Nice interior pass here. Wyatt Hawks to Jack Mizgin for the basket and foul. White Bear Lake is up one with under six minutes to go in the half. But then Wyzetta gets its offense going. Jackson McAndrew is wide open at the top and knocks down a three-pointer to give the Trojans a 30 to 20 lead. Wyzetta in transition. Jake Schmidt driving, then kicks the pass to the corner for Ben Schaefer for another three. He scores 12 points off the bench, part of a 16-0 scoring run. Wyzetta leads 38-25 at halftime. Early second half, Hayden Tibbetts drives, then finds an open Isaiah Hamti on the wing for a three. Hamti contributes 13 points as Wyzetta extends its lead. Tibbetts takes this next one himself, finishing the drive at the rim. He scores 17 points in the game, and the Trojans make 13 three-pointers. They advance to the state semifinals Thursday night against Lakeville North with an 81-61 win over White Bear Lake. Park Center beat Wyzetta in the Class 4A title game last year to win their first boys basketball championship. Park Center is the top seed for this year's tournament. Jay Wilcox has highlights of the Pirates quarterfinal round game. Defending state class 4A boys basketball champ Park Center faces Andover in the quarterfinal round. The Pirates go into C.J. O'Hara, who drops it off to J.J. Ware for the layup and a 7-0 lead to start the game. Andover's top scorer, Ben Kopitsky, with a nice fake and jumper as the Huskies pull within 19-14. 22 for Kopitsky total. After a turnover, Cash Chavis flings the long pass right on target for the layup by Jackson Folks. He scores 14. Joe Burgess in transition goes to the hoop for the layup and foul. He nets 15 in the game and the Pirates are up 50 to 32 at the half. Sam Musungu had 45 in Andover's section final. He scores 17 after a slow start in this one. O'Hara penetrates and sets up Burgess for the dunk as the Pirates hold off a few Huskies challenges. Andover gets within 10 late in the game, but it's Chavis and Park Center winning 92-72 to advance to the semifinals. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. Tutino Grace is the defending state champion in Class 3A boys basketball 
As Jason Melillo reports, the Eagles had a little trouble in the quarterfinals. Boys basketball state quarterfinals for Class 3A to Tino Grace against St. Francis. Taysen Chapman zips the pass to Isaiah Johnson and he scores for the Eagles early in the first half. Then Chapman with a dime to Patrick Bath and the big man finishes at the rim, 10 rip TG. The block by Bath triggers a Grace fast break. Zaire Stewart ahead to Chapman and he scores with the finger roll. Stewart penetrates and kicks to Johnson and he swishes a three pointer, 21 3 to Tino Grace. Eagles work it down low to Bath, and he throws down a two-handed flush. 17 points in the first half for Bath, 23 in the game. Second half, Chapman with the triple S. Steals, spins, and scores for Grace. He nets 16 points, and Chapman creates all day. Another nice pass sets up the hoop for Jaden Livingston. Tatino Grace rolls to the semifinals with an 86-36 victory. In Minneapolis, Jason Malolo, CCX Sports. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.